views expressed in the videos are my observation, analysis of events, persons based on principles of astrology. It's not my intent to predict, forecast absolute outcomes, only suggest how they may unfold. Nothing is set in stone. I could be wrong, but often I'm right. My desire is not to promote fear, only inform about what we see unfolding. It is our wish to prepare our subscribers for events that could affect them, their family, their goals, and their future, to help to prepare for what you may already feel suspect is happening, and to send a warning shot across the bow and raise a flag of concern. Our goal is to help, not hinder, in these perilous times, to inspire and offer possible direction, and to reveal that a greater plan and purpose are behind all that is happening. Eventually, we will see a brighter day. If you would like to show your appreciation for our work on these videos or this channel, and also the Knowing Whispers channel, you can always click on the word thanks at the bottom of all the videos. Hello everybody, it's Robert Cosmar, the Astrology of Life YouTube channel, the Knowing Whispers YouTube channel, and the Astrology Network on YouTube. It's starting to feel like it's time for me to get back into some of the videos that I have been doing for over six years on political conditions, um, on Donald Trump, and on world events. And this particular video that I'm doing today, I believe the title of this is going to be The Birth of the Presidency. This particular chart was drawn for March the 4th, 1789. On that date, the three separate um, foundational departments of the government were officially established, the legislative, the judicial, and the executive. This, for some, is the birth of the presidency. Now, others may think that George Washington being sworn in about, I think, a month or more after that might be the birth of the presidency. But my feeling is that that, that date is his particular presidency, whereas this particular chart has to do with the presidency as a whole. And like your horoscope, your birth chart, essentially is revealing or can reveal all of the things in your life to come. In some cases, with the Vedic horoscope, the karmic factors as to why you are experiencing the life that you're experiencing. This particular chart for that date is for the presidency as a whole. How it can function. How it operates how the presidents are going to perform or how they may fail to perform. In fact, I'm thinking that I may do a video at some point of Donald Trump's horoscope because we know his birth time and compare it against this aspect to aspect and to see whether or not the um, particular planetary placements between his birth chart and this chart are either harmonious or they are a mess, quite honestly. So. Keep that in mind. I may do something like that. Now, what are the things that when I look at this particular chart that really speak to me and that reveal for me the position of the presidency? The first thing that I noticed here is the extreme amount of Neptunian or Pisces energy that are in this particular chart. And that was kind of confusing in the beginning because you don't necessarily think of an executive position like the president of the United States to be ruled by a lot of Pisces or Neptunian energy. But if you think about it a little bit more, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Now, the thing that kind of mitigates all of this Pisces energy is that you'll notice that the sun here is one degree off of being conjunct the planet Saturn, okay? Saturn, as you know, represents discipline, organization. It uh, represents form. It can also represent hardship, challenges, um, many things that are not pleasant. 
And when you think about the presidency, as represented in this particular chart by the sun, you get a feel that this is the type of job that is going to be very serious. But it's also representing something that is very idealistic, that has some religious or spiritual overtones to it, which when you take a look at the Declaration of Independence in particular, um, you get the feeling that the forefathers were very much moved within themselves from the heart, you might say, to put something on paper that they felt was right, that they felt was important, that they felt was fair. Now, as this played itself out over time, we also find out that there were many other situations regarding this particular circumstance that you really couldn't say that they were necessarily fair or that they were necessarily heart-centered. And I'll talk about that here in a minute. But the thing here that's interesting is that you can see down here that Neptune is trining, okay? Pluto, Venus, and Mars, okay? Now, Venus and Mars and Pluto are in Aquarius, which has to do not only with in your chart, your hopes and dreams, but also altruistic uh, organizations and stuff that are for the betterment of humanity, for the further evolution of humanity. So this too becomes a part of the, the workflow, if you want to call it, of the president of the United States. Okay. Um, I want to mention here too, while we're at this particular point, that the birth time of this particular establishment of the three different departments of government is not known. So I use 12 o'clock PM. That may or may not have been when this particular event occurred. Um, so keep that in mind. And this is why I won't use the angles here and talking about this particular chart. But you can see here the tremendous influence of Neptunian influences, idealism, higher love, the high intent in the Declaration of Independence, okay? But like us as individuals, okay, that have high ideals and that aspire to high ideals in the way that we function and the way that we live, oftentimes we don't live up to that ideal. Oftentimes, many times we fall short of that, okay? And this is an indication that this particular presidency is often going to be like that. <clears throat> You know, we know from the history of presidents and stuff that many of them were scoundrels in their own way. We certainly know from the presidency of Donald Trump that morality is not a high priority, okay, in regards to his view of being president of the United States. He has an attitude more so of, you know, of being a king, all right? So you can see here, all right, that a lot of what the president represents is the ideal which the founding fathers had hoped to bring forth in Declaration of Independence into the Constitution, okay? But the reality, the duality, so to speak, okay? Uh, the difference between the higher part of ourselves and the part, the ego part that functions in this world, you see the reality, you know, that creeps in. And, uh, of course, there are many stories of presidents and, and things that... Uh, you know, in terms of their morality, were in question. Uh, John Kennedy's escapades outside of marriage, for one example. Bill Clinton's situation, okay? And going back to the essence here, uh, you know, of the astrology of this, okay? And I try to say this from time to time when I'm doing, you know, videos, because I want you to understand something from the standpoint of karma, okay? Things that happen in time, okay? essentially are the birth of an influence that is going to carry itself through in time, okay? And as I mentioned, I think several, maybe months ago, it's very difficult to communicate and relate this. I have to rely upon things that are um, similar in understanding to try to, to get you to understand this. But I'm sure that there are many of you who understand what I'm saying. That particular moment was the signature for how presidents would perform in office. Not all of them, but by and large, 
when you take a look at the presidency, okay, and you look at the circumstances around it, I think that you can probably understand here what I'm saying in this particular video. This is what the presidency was born to be and what its limitations are, what its functions are, okay? Uh, the situations regarding, for example, uh, Trump and regarding uh, Bill Clinton as an example. We have Venus here conjunct Pluto, okay? Uh, Venus conjuncting Pluto simply is a control factor. And you're talking here with Venus, you're talking about women, you're also talking about money, okay? In the presidency, a lot of the job is controlling the money, okay? There have also been episodes like Trump and Bill Clinton where control factors entered into how they treated women. And we don't know about the other presidents, okay? We don't know about a lot of the other ones, but uh, there are, I'm sure, a lot of stories that will relate to this. And what I'm suggesting here is that these energies or influences, okay, could very well play a part in the presidency as a whole. Much of it is secret and we don't know. You also don't know, and I don't know, okay, what the charts of the presidents themselves are in relationship to this chart, which would give us an idea as to what, okay, the latency in this particular chart, what they may have done, okay, which tends to be on the immoral side, and what would support the benefic, you know, parts of this particular chart, okay? Now, over here in the Aspectarian, okay, if there is one part in the Aspectarian, aside from what I mentioned here about Pluto conjuncting Venus and having a wide conjunction to Mars here, it has to do with Saturn here and the Moon, okay? And really the Sun and the Moon up here, okay? Uh, when you're talking about the Sun and the Moon, you're talking about the Sun representing the head, the president, the Moon being the public, okay? And you can see here that Saturn, the demands of the presidency, the function of the presidency, okay, squares the Moon, which is in Gemini, okay? This is one of those aspects where there is a lack of sensitivity, okay, because of the demands of the job, the demands of being the president of the United States, the giving of the power away, which is pretty much what has happened with the public, uh, essentially over th almost 250 years, giving more power to the president or to the government and um, wanting to kind of uh, deny the fact of individual responsibility, which keeps creeping back in, you know, and what we see happening politically in the world. So there is this disconnect there. Okay, or insensitivity might even be a better word. Okay, the president would be responsible. The president would be disciplined, organized. Uh, they would be, you know, in control of the finances. And I might add here, this is also a situation that could indicate that there, you know, is the insensitivity in some cases to the role that women play. Okay, as we see being played out with the situation with Roe versus Wade and the Supreme Court and things. Okay, so this potential, okay, of insensitivity there at that highest level, um, you know, sexual activity, escapades like Trump and also uh, Bill Clinton, you know, Pluto conjuncting Venus is another example here, okay? But for our purposes, you know, the everyday person, so to speak, um, the reality is, is that the world that the president functions in the demands, the responsibilities that they feel they have to uh, live by are not always in harmony with the needs and the feelings of the masses and the people, okay? And again, this is the birth chart of the presidency, and um, its intent here is to reveal, okay, to reveal to us what can we expect out of those who occupy that office on a positive side you can see over here that jupiter trines both the sun and mercury jupiter right here trines the sun 
and also Mercury. And this essentially symbolizes the, the power of the presidency or the success of it as an organization. In other words, with this type of birth chart, uh, when you're talking about communications, you're talking about the, the self-expression of that particular um, branch of government, you're talking about the possibility that this will succeed, that this is a good idea, okay? Um, Saturn and Jupiter, okay, are also in a trine aspect in this particular, um, you know, chart. Uh, Jupiter being at 19 degrees of Cancer, Saturn being at 13 degrees of Pisces. So again, in this particular situation, when you can pick out the flaws, the potential flaws here, you know, in this particular chart, Jupiter is in trying to the difficulties up here of the Sun and Saturn and Mercury. Okay. Uh, and again, so it explains why, as I mentioned a little bit ago, why the presidency has up until this point been successful and endured. Okay. The question as to whether it will endure much longer, though, is something uh, I think to be debated. And I may do another video on this particular topic and take a look at um, the transits to this particular chart. I haven't had a chance to do that yet to see what we could you know, possibly see unfolding as time goes on. Uh, it looks like from what I'm seeing now and getting a feel from, you know, the internet, from the major news organizations is Trump's beginning to show more visceral attitude and he's beginning to lash out at people in situations defiantly, you know, those that are trying to prosecute him. Um, there's a, a buildup, I feel, again, of this energy of Trump getting back into, you know, the mix of the direction that things could go down the road. So you want to, you know, cautiously observe what you see happening. Okay. Understand that whatever happens is for all practical purposes, the karma and the will of the universe. Okay. And that underlying all of this outer drama, there is this awakening that is going on very slowly, methodically around the world for people who are beginning to understand that their values maybe uh, need to change or that they have not quite got it right about why they're here and what life's all about. So I mentioned for the last six years, you know, the hardest part of all of this is probably not over yet. Okay. And if Trump is reelected under the circumstances under which he continues to go, uh, we'll know at that particular point how much trouble we're in. All right. And then we'll have to decide at that particular point, you know, what can be done, what needs to be done. Okay. Uh, I hope that you enjoy this. I hope that it makes sense to you. I didn't want to make it too complicated, but I wanted to give you a sense that you know, astrology, when you understand it, never really fails. As an astrologer, I can fail. I can make a mistake, an error in my judgment of what I'm seeing. Uh, any astrologer can. You know, we're not perfect. Uh, astrology is, in my opinion, one of the finest tools of understanding your life that exists. There are others. Okay. But it's not meant to be something which takes away your power all right and this is why we have the other channel the knowing whispers channel where we talk about meditation and awakening and um, astral travel the third eye consciousness okay higher self because if all you had was astrology okay as a means of understanding your life you would not have the necessary tools to be able to heal what you discovered in the horoscope uh, to make it through in many cases the things that uh, are revealed in a horoscope 
So this interpersonal relationship that we talk about, you know, in the New Language Whispers channel in particular, is extremely important. Okay. I see my work as an astrologer as like a mechanic or a diagnostics person. I am able to diagnose what could be going on in your life, okay, or what in the Vedic system may be the karma and fate that you have brought into this life. Okay. But I can't enlighten you. I may be able to help you to see certain things. Okay. The responsibility for reaching awakening a higher sense of your self and of life is the responsibility of every person it's not the responsibility of a psychic a tarot reader a numerologist you know even a therapist okay it's something which we have to decide whether or not to continue down a certain path or whether we need to find a path that is more fulfilling and healing and who we are okay now at this point i want to mention as I mentioned in many of the videos that I've been doing here lately, over on Facebook and also on LinkedIn, there are a group called Knowing Whispers, Messages from the Universe. In those groups, I share my channeled writings, okay, what my guides give to me. They are meant to help you, okay, to encourage you, to inspire you, to motivate you, to seek your own inner light and inner path, okay? You can also discuss things in those channels about your own growth and development. It's meant to be a place of healing and support, all right? If you haven't had a chance to go over there, I recommend that you go over there. Um, they're both in Facebook and in LinkedIn. And to join the discussion there if you feel drawn to do that, okay? And of course, there is the Knowing Whispers channel on YouTube, where a lot of the videos that I do uh, around spiritual awakening uh, and inner healing, I post as well. Um, sometimes it becomes overwhelming because there's so many things that are coming at me, you know, in regards to doing videos. But if you are inwardly curious, inwardly seeking, I think you'll find some answers there that will help you through what is going on and what we could see happening, okay? From the love of my life, CJ, my spiritual partner, and also the editor of many of the whispers that I put out on the internet, and Toby, our fur angel, who continuously provides love and affection for us, and we return that to him. I wanna thank those of you that are members of the channel, those of you that are subscribers, those of you that donate to the work that we do on a monthly basis, um, you're doing that is deeply appreciated. It's very helpful for CJ and I, who essentially are retired, you know, and living off the government, so to speak. And whatever, um, you know, the universe sends to me in particular in regards to doing readings, you know, we're not wealthy. I'm not wealthy. I don't make thousands of dollars every month doing readings. All right. Um, but it does help. And we appreciate everything that you do. Your comments in particular are very important because they help me to gauge whether or not what I'm sharing is effective in helping you as well. So, um, hopefully that will continue. Now, also on another note, uh, the series that I have started, The Astrology for Christians, I've done two. The first one was an overview of the series of about 12 videos. The second one I finished yesterday, I think, or the day before, had to do with the concept of knowledge. The next one I'm going to do is called Confessions. Let's see, Astrology for Christians, Confessions and Credentials. In that video, I'm going to basically put out my life story on that video. I'm going to explain to you the things that have happened to me, uh, where I was when the experience of cosmic consciousness hit me, the choices that I made, why I made them, and hopefully how I ended up being where I'm at on the internet, talking about spiritual awakening, meditation, inner healing, okay, and things of that nature. So you'll get an understanding here of my journey and of how at times very painful it was, but also the high points, okay, that have helped me 
that have opened me to greater realizations about life and about myself and about um, astrology, obviously. Okay, so I look forward to doing that. Thank you for watching, and uh, I will let you go and enjoy your day. Thank you very much.